when you're looking at the math, the bond math, uh, the fact that you've actually seen inflation, which you haven't seen for more than a decade, um, those kinds of things are demonstrating to me that you're actually starting to see the systemic breakdown of all these years, these decades of uh, central bankers manipulating a fiat system. And so it's here. Um, the next, the next uh, deflationary wave and the response that comes with it, I think, is going to really start to blow the lid off of it. Last week produced a flurry of inflation data points, and the bottom line is that inflation is moderating, but we're not out of the woods yet. Preston Peisch, co-founder of the Investors Podcast Network, predicts a looming round of substantial money printing in 2024. Pish anticipates the Federal Reserve will be compelled to significantly slash rates to bolster the U.S. economy amidst an election year. Additionally, he discusses Bitcoin's role in this scenario. As the year nears its end, Wall Street finds itself deeply divided on the prospects of a recession and the Federal Reserve's probable response. Goldman Sachs remains cautiously optimistic, assigning a 15% probability to a U.S. economic downturn next year attributing this potential contraction to an unforeseen external shock, as per Jan Hatzius, the chief economist at Goldman Sachs. Concurrently, the bank foresees the initial rate reduction occurring only in the fourth quarter of 2024. The recession has been trying to manifest itself since the banking crisis in March, Pish pointed out. Recent declines in bank asset values have significantly increased the vulnerability of the U.S. banking system to uninsured depositor runs. The actual market value of assets in the U.S. banking system is $2.2 trillion lower than the stated value of these assets. Pish believes that Bitcoin is positioned to perform exceptionally well in the current fragile economic system. Pish expects a significant drop in prices, then a huge push to stimulate the economy, like during COVID, causing prices to go up a lot. To understand more about what this means for markets, let's move towards the video. What's interesting is if you go back to the Silicon Valley Bank that would have absolutely collapsed, you would have had enormous amount of deflationary forces uh, quickly create contagion throughout the market. You had the Bill Ackman's of the world running around screaming about it. And he was right. He was if, if they did let it happen, you would have had a massive unwind because that's just the inherent nature of a fractional reserve credit based, you know, fiat money system. Um, that wasn't the recession that the Fed or any other central banker wanted. So what did they do? They stood up a backstop facility. That backstop facility effectively became yield curve control for banks and banks only. Everybody else in the economy had to play the, the rules of higher interest rates. Life's a whole lot harder for me to make money. I'm struggling here type economics for everybody but banks. So What's interesting is this recession that's trying to manifest itself has been trying to manifest itself way back since Silicon Valley Bank, but because they just stand up new facilities. And again, going back to this thesis that we're not dealing with free and open markets, we're, we're dealing with heavily manipulated markets, results in a system over a very long period of time, call it decades, that only gets more and more fragile and is why we're seeing the inflationary prints that we saw that got as high as 8%. So they're, you know, deflation's trying to, we're, we're trying to get this unwind from the everyday type of economic participant in the market. I think that they're on the cusp of manifesting that as we go into 2024. The way that they respond and the, the sheer quantity of monetary units they're going to have to respond with is only going to consolidate buying power into fewer and fewer hands on the next cycle, which is then going to manifest even higher inflation rates than what we saw on this last go around. Now, from like a timing standpoint, like that might not manifest itself for probably three or four years from where we're at right now, maybe even two years, depending on the speed of, of the response that they have. And I think inflation will go double digits. But in the meantime, in the coming year, if they keep their hands off the controls, we could we could see negative inflation prints. So like a person hearing this might be saying, well, this guy's just like all over the place. No, what I'm what I'm describing is how fragile this economic system has become because of how grossly uh, uh, consistent central bankers are at interjecting themselves into the system. So I say all that. 
And a person hearing that is saying, okay, so what do I do with my money? Where do I go if everything is just continuing to get worse from a free and open market standpoint? I'm a hardcore uh, uh, proponent of Bitcoin because it yeah. can't be manipulated, because it has a fixed terminal supply of 21 million coins, because governments can't step in and, and stop its use. So like something like that, to me, in a world where they're going to probably add at least 10 trillion more monetary units into this you know, fiat-based world system of fractional reserve credit-based money, um, I think it's going to do pretty darn well through all that because I think that the response that we see coming next is going to make uh, the, the COVID response blush. In the past 18 months, central banks globally have consistently raised interest rates to control inflation. However, a recent report from Deutsche Bank's research strategist Jim Reed highlights a shift. Currently, more central banks are reducing rates than increasing them, marking the first time since January 2021. Although prominent central banks like the U.S. Federal Reserve and the European Central Bank maintain their current rates, there's speculation that they might also begin to raise rates in the coming months. Markets may be betting the Federal Reserve's campaign of anti-inflation rate hikes is over, but at least one official isn't so sure. U.S. Federal Reserve Governor Lisa D. Cook said on Thursday that a soft landing is possible for the American economy, but it is not assured. Pish believes that what happens in 2024 relies heavily on how the Federal Reserve acts. He anticipates a scenario where the Fed is forced to implement significant rate cuts, potentially starting in early 2024. Let's get back to the interview. First quarter of 2024, things are going to get really spicy. Uh, you see every government person out there saying this soft landing thing, and you see all the media drones basically repeating the message that we're going to have a soft landing, which pretty much means you're probably not going to have a soft landing. Um, so yeah, I would say 2024 first quarter, maybe by the end of the first quarter, uh, things are going to get spicy and they're going to have to have some type of response considering it's an election year. I think the, the speed of the response is going to be much faster and much more swift with a lot more magnitude of fiat printing than what you would get in a, in a non-election uh, year. So, um, and I think that they're just going to really break something catastrophically uh, because of so much manipulation that's that's taken place. And like the free and open market was, well, the lack of the free and open market was trying to produce that back in March. And so kicking that can for a year was is probably going to only in, increase the size of, of what kind of comes out of it. So like the deflation is, is dependent on like the, the Fed response. So like if the Fed just like, yeah, we're going to let this thing really unravel, we're going to bring like sheer pain to everybody and they take their hands off the controls, you're going to get deflationary pricing. But as soon as they step back into the market and they and they try to like provide enough liquidity, like this thing's going to come rip roaring back. And so like the message here isn't like to try to time this, like you know how much they're going to respond in the second, the, the moment and the exact time that they're going to do it. The thing to prepare for is it's going to get violent. You're going to see yields go down. You're going to see real yields rip higher. I expect like on the other side of this, like I said, two to three years, we're going to be double digit inflation. Now, whether they're telling you that or not, I don't know, but that's that's going to be the reality that people are dealing with is that they're going to be dealing with really high inflation because you break things when you do this, right? Like when you manipulate late the market for this long that, that you've been doing it, the thing is, is that systemically it builds and builds and builds and the market is trying to manifest uh, creative destruction and if they forego creative destruction, what you get is this big giant creative destruction at the end of it. And so like, that's what I'm describing. And there's a whole host and array of things that can happen. But the way you prepare for it is you own scarce, desirable things that can't be manipulated, that have a terminal fixed supply, that a paper derivatives market can't come in and, sub and suppress the price because nobody actually wants to take physical custody of it. And I'm talking about Bitcoin. UBS expects the economy to contract by half a percentage point in the middle of next year, with annual GDP growth dropping to just 0.3% in 2024 and unemployment rising to nearly 5% by the end of the year. What is your stance? How Federal Reserve will respond to the economic challenges in early 2024? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you liked the video, please subscribe to our channel and remember to activate notifications by hitting the bell icon. Your participation means a lot to us. Thank you.